So good to be able to welcome you to this uh, daily devotions on the Doncaster Methodist Circuit YouTube channel. We welcome you in the name of our risen Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Over the next couple of days, we're going to have a look at the epistle, which is appointed for next Sunday. It comes from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. So here is the, the first of our visits to that chapter of this particular letter. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dare to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please people, but God, who tests our hearts. You know, we never used flattery, nor did we put a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or from anyone else. Even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. Well, over the last couple of weeks, my car went in for its MOT. It's four years old now, so it was due uh, its MOT. And uh, I'm glad to say it passed the MOT. It came back with some advisory notes, such as you might want to pay a little attention to the passenger side brake pad. You might want to pay some attention to the driver side brake pad, uh, things like that. So that's some advisories, uh, but nevertheless, it passed the MOT, which of course I, I was delighted about. One of the reasons why I'm thinking about my MOT is because it, well, basically, first of all, just to say that I can't help but spot, because I spot these things, uh, that MOT forms the first three letters of the word motives. And I couldn't help but thinking that in this chapter, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, that's exactly what Paul is doing. It's almost as though he is taking his motives that begin with MOT uh, in for an MOT. I don't know about you, but I always spot when people seem to be answering a question that no one has asked. And I get that impression when I listen to Paul, where he seems to be answering accusations. It's almost as though we're listening to Paul on one end of the telephone, but of course we can't hear what the other people are saying. But I wonder if he, rather than answering questions that no one's asked, I wonder if he was answering accusations that people actually had made. Were they asking questions about his authenticity, his integrity, uh, his motives? And it's almost as though in answering these accusations on our end of the telephone, the part that we can hear, uh, he's taking his MOT motives for an MOT. So I thought I'd just have a look at these motives and this TOM, the present speaker, would take his motives for an MOT. And your name may not be TOM, Tom, but nevertheless you could do the same uh, as I go through it uh, if you feel it's appropriate uh, for you. So let's just 
go back to the passage and look at some of these things that he seems to be answering his accusers about. So in verse 3 he says, For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. Well, who said you were, Paul? Must have been on the other side of the telephone. So that prompts me uh, to ask, do I sometimes have impure motives? I may not uh, even think that I, I ever use trickery, um, but if that's another way of saying that sometimes we're not always entirely uh, transparent and we try to uh, use smoke and mirrors, uh, as it were, what if I just need to take those parts of my behaviour, my interior life or an MOT and, and just think about whether my motives are pure and whether I'm as transparent uh, as I could be. Take it for an MOT. Uh, so verse 4. We are not trying to please people, but God. Paul, who said you were trying to please people? Must have been those on the other side of the telephone. Hmm. But people pleasing, that's such an easy one uh, for anybody to fall into, isn't it? And when I say anyone, perhaps particularly if you're conflict averse. Or are there particular people that I'm trying to please? I may not be the kind of person that has to please everybody, uh, just perhaps those with the biggest voices, those who I think perhaps uh, hold all the cards, all the power. Perhaps those are the ones that I try to please. What would it look like if I put pleasing God as my priority and my primary motive, however it displeased another person, whoever he or she uh, likes to think that they are? So, people pleasing. I wonder if that's a, a motive that this TOM needs to take for an MOT. I wonder if you took that motive in for an MOT yourself. Uh, how's that going to go? Uh, would you get a few advisories? Uh, verse 5. You know, we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. Well, who said you did, Paul? Them again. Flattery and mask wearing. Am I more prone to them than I'd care to think that I am? Think I might need to take my motives for an MOT. Verse 6. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else. <laughs> Again, who said that you were? <laughs> but it takes a very special kind of person, doesn't it, to never ever play to the gallery at all. Um, not to want a bit of praise uh, for what they've done and not to have to feel compelled uh, to put something, some success or meritorious deed on Facebook so everybody can send the thumbs up and the likes and the applause and all that kind of stuff. It takes a very special kind of person who can do things and rather than seeking the praise, uh, does the Sermon on the Mount thing, you know, goes into the closet and only God can see because the left hand simply won't know what the right hand is doing. So, this TOM is taking some of these motives in for an MOT before G-O-D. And that might lead me to a time of confession. And it might do the same for you too. But let's not just leave it there, because I just want you to notice uh, something else before we go. Uh, and it is to say how many times uh, Paul, in these just these eight verses, refers to things that, rather than coming from poor motives, uh, spring from God. Uh, where they have their source. And the number of times he can call God as his witness and, and claim that God knows 
uh, what's in his heart. Uh, again, if you just bear with me, I'll just remind you some of the things uh, that he said. He, he says he had the help of God. He was approved by God. The gospel is entrusted to him by, you've guessed it, God. God knows his heart and God is his witness. Do you know, once you've taken your MOT motives for an MOT, and once you know that actually the things you do, the things you say, are coming from a good place, then however disappointed others might be, however much they may dislike what you do or say, however they may slander you or libel you, you can leave that all up to God, who is your witness and knows your heart. And if that reminds you of anyone, it might be that person who was like a lamb to the slaughter, who before a shearers was dumb. That's the method that Jesus adopted. I wonder if we need a special measure of his grace to adopt that method to him. So see you tomorrow morning and we'll be back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 8 but by then you might have taken your motives for an MOT. See you tomorrow.